Well, March is over. I turned 22 this last month, and uh, we're back at this little game again where I'm going to be talking about the books that I read, or I should say, the books I completed in, 2000, in uh, March of this year. Now, I am only talking about books I completed. I am not talking about books that I started, because that is an entirely different issue. And plus, I feel that wouldn't really count anyway. Mmm. That's good. Uh, one of the books that I read this month, I've already done a review for, so I'll link that down below. But, um, I read, I completed, I should say, I completed four books this month, which is quite nice, much better than last month, where I only completed two, and then I started reading manga, so, you know. Uh, we're in the business now. So I'm gonna be talking about some, uh, books that I read this month. Uh, I'm kind of veering back into that fantasy stuff, so that's gonna be pretty fun to talk about. So let's get into it. Uh, the book that I uh, completed first this month is a book I already covered on this channel, uh, Station Eleven from Emily St. John Mandela. I already did a review of this book, so I won't say too much. But uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a, I thought it was a really interesting take on the post-apocalyptic story. Um, it's very much not a conventional post-apocalyptic story. It, it's very non-linear. But luckily, the book doesn't, you know, get lost in its non-linearity. That's not a word, I bet. But in any other case, uh, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was a lot of... I wouldn't say a lot of fun, because that's not really the best word to describe it as. But I enjoyed myself reading Station Eleven. I thought it was a really good book. Uh, very well written. It wasn't super poetic, which was nice. It didn't get overly sappy with the emotion. Uh, everything in this book felt really natural, and... You know, I'm still I'm still kind of beefing my friend Jason about this book because uh, I thought this book was pretty good and he was just kind of he just kind of ditched it. So yeah. Uh, second book that I completed uh, is a book that I had wanted to try out for a while. I tried it last year, and then um, uh, and then I and then I'm like fuck this. I don't feel like reading that right now. And uh, that and I went back to it again. And that book is the Black Tongue Thief from Christopher Buhlman. I have read two books of his now, this and those across the river, which hopefully I will uh, get to review in October for reasons. Uh, but yeah, I, I read this and uh, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the world building was probably the best part of this book. The characters were uh, fun, but there were problems I had with it. There was certainly the... Uh, it felt like Buhlman didn't really know where to take these characters. Like, he didn't, it didn't feel like they had a specific arc in the story so far. Um, our main character has one, but the other ones are kind of more opaque, which, you know, um, I, you know, I, I wish there was a more solid arc, I guess you could say, but this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the voice is really nice. I really enjoy it. Um, if you've heard the audiobook, uh, I did listen to a little bit of the audiobook, it is fantastic. Go check it out. Um, I also love the cover art of this book. It's just really, it's really nice. I really, um, I, let me, let me see who did that. Uh, no. Uh -huh. The jacket art is by Marie Bergeron. So Marie Bergeron, you done good with this, uh, with this cover because, um, I really enjoy it. I think this is a really good, uh, I think this is a really good cover. But as for the book itself, I liked it, didn't love it. I thought it was just fine. It didn't blow me away. Um, the world was really cool. I really want to see more of this world. But I'm hoping that uh, the story will be better in the next book. I'm not going to discount this entirely. But this was just a, you know, solid read. You know, just your good old-fashioned, you know, kind of standard uh, fantasy novel. If you're a fan... I, I, this is what attracted me to this book, but if you're a fan of Fawford and the Grey Mauser, I think you'll really like this. This is basically the darker and grimmer version of those stories uh, by Fritz Lieber. And, um, which is funny, because I did tweet to Christopher Peelman, and God bless the man, he, he actually responded to me, confirmed to me that no, Fawford and the Grey Mauser did not inspire this book in no way at all. <laughs> So, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Veolman, for responding to me. But, um, yeah, no, this book was not inspired at all from Fawford and the Grey Mauser, but it feels a lot like it. So if you like Fawford and the Grey Mauser, 
Uh, this is definitely a book I would recommend. It's not... It's not the most original book in the world, but I, to its credit, it's not trying to be. It's trying to uh, tell a new kind of story with an old style, which I can appreciate. Um, but it didn't quite land for me like it did with like other people, you know, such as, you know, there, there, there are other YouTubers out there who have covered this book, so if you're going to want to go watch that, um, you can. But this book was fine. I thought it was a good time. Um, I don't do star ratings, but if I did do a star rating, it's probably like a 3.5 out of 5. Like, it's not terrible, but it didn't blow me away. Um, but I do want to check out more Buhlman stuff. It, it, you know, I did really enjoy Those Across the River, which I have over there. I, I don't want to pull it out at the moment. Um, but yeah, Black Tongue Thief was fun, and I am looking forward to that second book. I'm hoping it is uh, even better. So, yeah, and I, I got an uncharacteristic hardcover. I tend to get the... I, I, I like the paperbacks a lot more, but, you know, that this is what they were selling. I got this when it was brand new, so that was all they were selling at that moment. Uh, now the next book I read, a uh, crime thriller conspiracy mercenary thing called Some Die Nameless from Wallace Strobe. This is another one that I barely see covered on YouTube. I've seen it covered on Goodreads, but YouTube... Not there's not a lick of a word about it. I might do a review of this book soon, um, but it was really good. Very quick read, not at all you know difficult to get behind. It actually reminded me a lot of the Parker books in terms of just the prose style because it's very bare bones, very clean to the point. Might be because Wallace Strobe is a journalist, and uh, considering my own um, profession as a journalist. Um, they often drill in your head to keep it as clear and concise as possible and to not get overly flowery with your language. That is like a humongous thing when it comes to being a journalist. Yeah. And um, Some Die Nameless, that, that book really exemplifies that. It's also about a journalist, funnily enough. There's a journalist in this. And there's actually some pretty good commentary about how journalism is in a rapid decline because a lot of the newspaper companies are kind of bending over for companies in, in, in other ways. Um, there's also a conspiracy plot with mercenaries, uh, which I thought was a lot of fun. I thought it was really, really interesting direction this book took. But it's not super ridiculous, like action movie it could have easily become something like Commando, where it's just a guy running around just shooting a bunch of people all willy-nilly. Um, but luckily, this book didn't do that. And, um, yeah, uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, some solid characterization in this. I really don't freaking like saying character work, but uh, there is good stuff uh, like that in this. And, um... It's it's uh, really quite interesting, and I enjoyed it. I don't know what to tell you. Also, shout out to my Goodreads friend, uh, Kemper. Uh, he was the one who introduced me to this book. And uh, also, the villain in this is also named Kemper. So I, I thought he'd appreciate if I brought that up. Um, so yeah. uh, this last book I'm going to be bringing up was one kind of like The Blade itself, which I reviewed on here as well. Uh, th this is one that's been hyped all over BookTube, YouTube, the internet, all over the place. Everyone was telling me how this is the best fantasy novel since Melted Butter, okay? And that book is The Lies of Locke Lamour. I, I got the fucking airplane novel version of it. But, um, this book was fantastic. Easily my favorite book of this month. Um, it starts out slow, but let me tell you... I was enraptured most of the time, and this book, it lived up to the hype. And I went in with uh, pretty reasonable expectations. I'm like, okay, maybe this book will, you know, I'll enjoy it, but maybe it won't blow me away. I don't know. I, I try not to overhype myself when it comes to over, or not overhype, but hype books, because, you know, I don't want to get let down. But luckily, this book did not let me down. I was very, very pleased with it. Um, a lot of really fun characters... Um, really fun playing with your expectations. I really love the prose style. There's a lot of just really great lines in this, both in the dialogue and in how the book is written. 
like just oh my gosh it's amazing I really enjoy it I also enjoy the characters everyone talks about how Locke and John are awesome I can't disagree with that Locke is an interesting character because he um well Locke is interesting because he certainly he's got a lot of heart I'll put it that way I'm actually planning on doing a review of this book on Friday, so um, I'll expand more on why I enjoyed this book, but I loved it. I love this book. This is easily a five-star read for me. Um, I really enjoyed uh, reading through it, and yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun. It really is just a, it's just a wonderful book, and I, I can't wait to get to Red Scott... Red Seas under Red Skies, because, you know, it's just, this book was freaking awesome, and I can't wait to see what Scott Lynch does next, and um, I, I was glad to um, be satisfied by this book. There was a lot of great stuff in this, but um, again, I'll try and keep that for the um, for the actual review. Um, some other stuff I did this month, I saw some movies. I did a double feature with my dad for my birthday. We watched uh, Creed 3 and Cocaine Bear. Uh, Creed 3 was a lot of fun because um, uh, it's basically a live-action anime at this point. I mean, I know Michael B. Jordan really likes anime. Um, and Cocaine Bear is, is kind of what you imagine. You know, it's a bear who gets on cocaine and goes on a fucking rampage. Based on a true story, by the way. Um, except, um, well, embellished, of course, by Hollywood. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was a lot. It had a lot more heart than I was expecting from a movie called Cocaine Bear. But you know, it, you know, that's just kind of. I guess that's par for the course, right? Yeah. And um, then I saw John Wick Chapter Four. It's fucking John Wick, man! Seriously, the action in these in those movies are outstanding. And to be honest, I, I would love to cover the John Wick movies on. Britain Jake because I those are freaking awesome. The world building is oh my gosh, it would make fantasy lovers who like that type of stuff you would ejaculate watching these movies. Like really, I'm not I'm not kidding. I hope you don't mind the vulgarity, but you know, that's that's really the best I got for right now. Yeah. But yeah, this is these are the books that I read in March. What am I reading in April? Well, You'll find that out in April, because I'm not doing one of those what I'm reading in April type of thing, because I kind of like reading what I want, you know? I like feeling flexible, you know? Anyway, I'm just fucking rambling on. Turn into Brian Lee Durfee here. Anyway. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm going to get blasted on the internet for this. Anyway, so not really much for me to say. Aside from, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like my video. Please comment. I love reading them, and I like answering them, even though I can be bad at it sometimes, because college has got me a busy boy. But, um, check out my Twitter, where I am even more unfiltered than I already am here. Goodreads, Letterboxd, I review stuff on there. It's probably more coherent than the stuff you hear on this channel here. And Discord. Please, please, it is empty in my Discord. Please come to my Discord. I, I, I want to talk to you guys. Really, I do. I just, please, please do that. That would be very nice. I would appreciate that. <clears throat> anyway, take care, everyone. Um, uh, put out some new reviews this month, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Goodbye.